everybody tells you that it's it's good to fail and to fail fast, but nobody tells you how much it hurts when you fail. But you still have to get up and try again. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Creative Truth. Today, we're going to do a little bit more of a traditional episode. Uh, and so instead of having a uh, regular guest on, I'm back with co-founder of The Creative Truth, Raz Misher. And we're going to be talking about taking the leap of faith and what it means to uh, go into business or start a business or you know commit to something big, scary, big, what do they call it? Big, hairy, audacious goal. Is that what it is? Yep. Hag, yep yep so uh so i guess to open it up um you're kind of an expert in taking the leap of faith uh tell me a couple times that that uh that you've had to uh face face that leap and and what it uh took to actually take the leap and then what happened from there oh man every day i take a leap <laughs> it seems like definitely every month for sure uh even like moving to a new, you know, so I'm moved to a new city in Gastonia. It's really close to home. So I'm close to a lot of family and friends, but you know, multiple times we've just packed up everything and moved, not knowing anybody, not knowing, you know, where we're going to stay. You know, we moved from, we moved from Charlotte to Chicago and got a whole, you know, got an apartment and with, you know, sight and scene, you know, we did the same thing. We packed up and moved everything to Savannah. Uh, and got a place sight unseen. We did the same thing here. Like but we bought our home in Gastonia. We never, we didn't even tour it first. We just, we saw it online. We saw the pictures and we knew we wanted it. So we put an offer in and then we came and saw it. So it's a, uh, we are, you know, experts at it, my wife and I. But as far as business goes, um, even, you know, pot on the go, like I didn't know what was going to happen. So I created a, a, a cheap logo. I had an idea, created a cheap logo, created a website that was a very basic website. And I started emailing people and I started going to events. You know, it's that's just my thing is like, let's, let's try it instead of thinking about it or and overanalyzing it. Let's just put the basics together, get a cheap business card, get a cheap logo and start trying and see, you know, see if anybody has a need. You know? Yeah, I, I and there's a, a lot of people out there that are that want to uh, take the leap of faith. And I remember like interviewing uh, an insurance agent and uh, he was like in his, I think like late forties or fifties. And he's just, he said to me, he's like, I always wanted to be an actor. And I was like, you still can, like, it's not too late. Like you can do right. it, you know, if you're serious about it, you know? Um, but uh, I've lived my life in a way that there have been times when I should have just, packed up and moved to Los Angeles and, mm -hmm. you know, worked in Hollywood and, and, and on productions, major, major productions, but I didn't, I, yeah. I stayed in my hometown cause I had a stable job and I should have studied like filmmaking, but I studied television, broadcasting and television. Now I have no regrets, but there have been times in my life where I've been faced with taking a leap of faith and I, I didn't ch like chicken out cause it wasn't like I'm about to, and then I didn't. Cause mm -hmm. when I really commit my mind to something, I do it. But, um, but I have taken like the easier route a, a, a couple of times mm -hmm. and I don't regret it. Cause I, I like where I'm at now with my life. But mm -hmm. um, at the time of release, this video is going to be coming out in uh, the beginning of March. And uh, so when we're recording um, I had a full-time job in Savannah as a videographer for visit Savannah. And uh, as the listeners probably know, and I have uh, since left my job and I'm now a full-time uh, videographer and uh, podcaster and, and uh, a real estate photographer. Yeah. So it's uh, for me, I did also approach it a little cautiously and that, I mean, you would have, while you were living in Savannah, it would have been awesome if I was able to go full-time um, you know, as a videographer and we could have really gone in on pot on the go and create marketing. Yeah. Um, but I had to be a little more cautious because of just my finances, my personal finances and personal mm -hmm. choices I had made in the past. Um, so it was, it was really scary. I mean, it's, it's COVID it's, we're still in the middle of the COVID pandemic mm -hmm. and, um, but I had set a date for myself and that's something I, I'll do a lot where I'll be like, all right, if I don't figure out what I'm going to do next by 
like you know see you you'll say next week but i'll say like nine months from now <laughs> then i'm i'm either going to you know hell or high water like i'm i'm going to leave my job and i'm going to figure out how to and what's great about having a timeline for yourself is that's actually a goal and not just a dream or a wish mm -hmm. so you know like okay in nine months i'm not going to have a job i'm not going to have health insurance i'm not going to have um you know a reliable income so between now and then i need to figure out how i'm going to survive yeah. and so it's like a self-imposed deadline but um but that's what i did and i was like okay i'll need a camera i'll need you know thankfully um you had taken the leap of faith and we have the uh the pod box 2.0 mm -hmm. and so i was able to kind of uh jump with you a little bit on that yeah for sure and uh and then uh so i got everything i needed and then i got uh, you know i had i had the money that i like i was generating enough revenue that i'm like okay there's nothing left. I'm at the edge of the cliff. I'm looking down. I'm scared, but you know, and it's, it is like, if you've never quit a job, I've done two uh, major, I've left two major jobs that I've been at for a couple of years. And you know, my hands shake every time. It's like, I'm, you know, I'm tendering my resignation and they're like, what? what? It's no, yeah. my, the, the big boss is like, nobody's quitting their job right now. <laughs> <laughs> in the pandemic <laughs> like yeah i know but you know i have I'm a dream different. yeah it's yeah, like, yeah I, I know but i'm different you know exactly so yeah. um so what uh what's some advice you have for people that uh, maybe want to be creative professionals or creative entrepreneurs um but just haven't been able to take the leap of faith i think they should do exactly what you did is make sure that their finances are stable first make sure that um, they have some clients lined up and start part time, you know, just do it on the weekends, like just start throw it, you know, not throw it away, but, you know, turn your TV off, unplug your TV, put it up in the attic somewhere so you don't use it, you know, turn your phone on silent on the weekends or what, whatever you need to do to make sure that you have time to work towards the passion so that it can grow, you know, and it might take six months, it might take nine months, but you don't want to quit your job and not have any money coming in thinking that you can go out and make a ton of money. Because even if you think you have a client lined up, if that one client changes their mind or if something happens like, you know, a coronavirus or some kind of other pandemic, then you'll be screwed if they don't want to use you as a client anymore. You know, or, you know, some uh, some clients will, you know, hire your own and bring you in and pay you for one gig and learn everything from you and start doing it themselves. You, you know what I mean? You might get chipped. <laughs> so, <laughs> who I still love. Oh, uh, still a funny dude. But these, um, you know, it's like, it's just things, you know, you think you're going to be successful and you have, you can live this, this whole reality in your mind, um, even if it's not, and it'll screw you up if, because it's not reality. Like there's things that are, you know, there's major time and there's minor time and being in front of people, meeting people, signing contracts, talking to a person in person, like a potential client in person, that's major time. Anything you can be doing with a client. Um, sending emails, posting on social media, um, you know, thinking about making a call, editing, all this kind of minor time stuff, you know? So on the weekends, you want to make sure that you're doing things while you're working and you're thinking about starting, but start doing some things that are going to be major, major time. If that makes sense. You know, major activities, important activities, the things that are really going to get you money and not just the things that are going to make you look good. So that would be my uh, advice. Do what Tyler did. Keep your job. And then you never know, like, uh, once you take a leap, there's always another once there's always another something, there's always something down there to catch you a little bit. Or I guess what I should say is that once you close one door, another one always opens, you're never just trapped, you know, nothing ends, you know, so you know, so like Tyler quit his job, but then they hired him back as you know, contra for contract work to do some work for him because he was just he was that good. And they wanted him to continue working, you know, I opened the studio, the first pod box, not knowing how it's going to make money. And just by adding a Google, um, you know, just getting, you know, Google my business, whatever, you know, getting my pod box on Google, I met a really great client, Nick DiPaolo, and his manager just called me out of the blue because he found me on, you know, Google Maps. And it's the same thing, you know, I set up my studio here in Gastonia and out of nowhere, um, I got a, a new client uh, that is going to be a, a whiskey brand. 
um, out of Louisville, the largest family owned whiskey brand in the nation. So it's really cool. So, um, so yeah, I mean, don't be afraid to take it, but also take smart steps, especially if you have a family or you have responsibilities, you know, that's what I would say. I have a couple points to make on that. Um, one, uh, they say, you know, you mentioned uh, seeing if there's a demand. You could do like a, a market analysis or competitive analysis, which mm-hmm. doesn't. It sounds it sounds like a like a business jargon, but that's basically like if you want to be a real estate photographer, see if there's other real estate photographers in the area, and if there are, see like, can you work with them? Can you collaborate with them? If not, how much are they charging? What is the quality of their product or the turnaround time? And mm-hmm. how can you do what they do better? And, uh, yeah. you know, and how many people are in demand for the product that you're trying to sell? Mm-hmm. So something like Pot on the Go, uh, I mean, you you truly are a little bit visionary because I, I, I made a joke in, in our, our, our earlier episode that you were on the Creative Truth where I uh, said, you know, millennials are getting made fun of because now every single millennial has a podcast and it's like, we were here first. We've been doing this for like two years now. We didn't wait till the pandemic to start a podcast. So, (laughs) that's right. (laughs) Um, so anyway, and then the other, so basically just figuring out, is there a demand for what you want to do? The other thing is you mentioned working after hours and on the weekends. Yeah. You're going to have to bust your ass. And the Mm. thing is, if you hate it, if you hate working a full-time job, and then going home and working more, then maybe maybe what you maybe what you think is your dream isn't necessarily um, what you should be doing. Because when you do take the leap of faith and you leave your job, you're going to be working that much. The terms are different because you can set your own schedule and and uh, you know set your own dress code and bring mm-hmm. your puppy dog to work with you every day whatever, but you're going to be working really hard. And so um, that's a great advice to just start doing the work on the nights and the weekends to like working towards what you want to be doing before you take the leap of faith to see what you yeah. like, what you don't like. Yeah. Um, and, and you're right. It's, it's going to suck. It's going to be a lot of hard work. I mean, on a regular basis, I go to sleep at nine o'clock or 10 o'clock really. And I wake up at three or three thirty to edit. And it doesn't, it doesn't, like, I love it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It doesn't feel like work because I found the one thing that I love to do, you know? So I'm happy to wake up at that time because I'm happy to say, okay, I can wake up, go upstairs to my studio and, you know, work for two hours and then edit and then plan. And then, you know, at 6 a.m., I'm still here at the house and I can help my kids get ready for school. I can make sure they have breakfast, clean clothes, all that stuff and get them off. And then I can, you know, go back to work whenever I want to, you know? So that's, that's what I love about it. But also, you know, for a long time, I thought I wanted to do a food truck. So me and some buddies always used to think and make plans and, you know, put together like little mock business plans. And then I started thinking, you know, could I stand in a food truck for nine hours in a very close and close space with two or three other people in a hot space fixing food for hours? I can't just go stand that. in That's... your just go stand in your shed for eight hours and see if you want to do that full time. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. No, I can't do that. So th- that's one thing you have to realize this is going to be a lot of hard work. Like it's not glamorous. Nothing's glamorous. You know, even the people that pay to get into the magazines that you look at, they're paying to get in there most of the time. You know, they don't love that job. They just like they just know how to look good. So it's like there's a whole facade of every any business you think is going to be um, amazing that you're going to love. You got to actually put yourself there and say, what's the worst that could happen? And like, how, <clears throat> you know, how hard am I going to have to work and see, you know, see if you can handle it before you even take the leap. All right. L- this is one of our favorite topics. Let's talk about failure. What's your outlook on, on failure? Um, I think it sucks. <laughs> I think enough people don't say how bad it sucks. You know, when you fail at something or when you let a client down or, um, you know, it hurts and it, anyway for me it hurts I mean it lingers for a long time whenever I'm late to a gig or I forget about a gig or you know I'm so busy that you know the editing uh doesn't happen on time or something like that um or I you know I forget a piece of equipment I forget a memory card I forget a you know SD card that has all the important files on it before a production you know what I mean like that that sucks and that to me that's failure as well it's not necessarily you know, ending a business is not failure because you still have to, every business, you want to make a plan to know when you're going to end it and how you're going to end it. 
you know, you want to have a, a exit strategy, a, a exit strategy, yeah, a way out. Uh, anyway, so that's that's what I think about. I think failure is cool, and a lot of things. That was actually going to be the moment of truth. I think. Every, you know, things are is everybody tells you that it's it's good to fail and to fail fast, but nobody tells you how much it hurts when you fail. But you still have to get up and try again. You know, nobody really cares. You know that you failed. People just want to see how how well you can get up, how well you can make changes. You know, if you get a bad review on, you know, the Yelp or whatever, wherever it is, Facebook, people want to see that you respond to the review and say, I'm sorry. And let, you know, maybe I can fix it next time. You know, or maybe even excuse. explain the situation more. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's not about failing. It's about getting up. That's what I would say. Um, what about you? Uh, so I don't know. I don't know how to, I can't say that I have grown a business to become a, a, a unicorn company or anything like that. Like I've grown stuff to be successful, like, uh, you know, like a large corporation with hundreds of employees that hasn't happened yet, but I have tried a lot of things. I have mm-hmm. said, you know, I've tried to sell sunglasses and I've tried drop shipping and I've tried to sell apparel and I've uh, I've done different branches of videography. Like I used to be in the wedding business and I no longer do that. And uh, I've worked a lot of jobs and I've, I, it was even contracting, uh, like literally working with my hands, fixing up houses and um, working, you know, currently I'm trying to be a real estate photographer, uh, 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 a corporate uh, videographer and then a podcaster. So I'm still trying a lot of things and every day I have ideas. Now I haven't, I haven't necessarily made my millions and grown multiple businesses to, you know, fortune 500 level, but I do, I have tried enough things and failed at them to, uh, to know what works and what doesn't work from just a 30 second elevator pitch or like Mm -hmm. why something might not be feasible or scalable. Mm -hmm. So like it, for example, if something, if you're trying to start a sunglass company or a, um, a swimwear company, something like that, you need some sort. And this is like, you can watch shark tank. I mean, you'll, you'll learn Mm -hmm. like, what's your competitive advantage? Cause it's, if there's nothing in the design or the utility of what you're selling, it's just a commodity and anyone else could do it. And if you're marketing a commodity, uh, the, there's only two ways to grow your cu- customer base. And that's through organic marketing, which is time or ad dollars. So you need either a lot of time or a lot of money to make something like that work. So mm-hmm. people say, oh, well, I, they'll come to me and like, what do you think about this idea? Um, and I'm like, okay, well, here's, uh, I'm not never going to poo poo somebody's idea if they're passionate about it, but here are some things to look out for. And here are maybe some ways that you can gain a competitive advantage over other people in your market kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I failed, I failed hard. I failed often. I've tried so many things. Uh, one of my, like my first company, I was like, you know, you did this too. I was selling candy bars and soda, Mm -hmm. soda cans out of my locker. Yeah, I tried to start a, a company called CNY Ramps and Rails, which we were building skateboard ramps when we were like 17. Um, uh, a property management company uh, with my buddy, um, uh, you know, digital marketing companies. And uh, I feel like there's there's a couple others that, uh, yeah, Honey Sunglasses. I mean, there's just mm. all these uh, all these companies that I just try you know, I take the leap of faith and then I, I kind of learn like, Oh, here's why more people don't do this and why it's, if it is successful, here's why it's successful. And here's why maybe it's not the route I want to go. So yeah, I failed a lot. And, um, but it, it's just really helped me isolate what is like feasible and and profitable. And, And now I really try and just operate under this lean model where I'm able to make a lot of revenue without spending a lot, basically minimal overhead. I like, I don't mm-hmm. like to have a lot of overhead. Um, but unfortunately where I'm at with my business now, I need to take on um, some payroll overhead because that's the only way for me to scale this business. So that'll be a new adventure for me, but you know what? I am, um, I'm prepped, I'm prepped for failure and I'm uh, you know, I'm not scared of it. So, yeah. because I have, 
I have failed enough and it does suck. Um, but uh, yeah, you just basically figure out how you can do better. And that's all anyone can ask. We're, no one's perfect, you know, but like right. if you say, if you say this, I'm, you know, I forgot to include your tour date. Uh, I'll do it better next time. You better do it. You know, don't make the same mistake twice right. because exactly. I'll, I'll forgive you for one time, but exactly. Yeah. 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 And, and that's one thing I definitely try not to do. I try not to make the same mistake twice. I think a mistake is okay. It's whatever on up to it, but don't make it twice, you know, make a note of it, you know, put some processes in place to make sure that you don't make the same mistake twice. And that's, that's all everybody asks for. I think most people understand, you know, and I think a big part of it is just having a good attitude, you know, even if you're doing something completely new, like when I started podcasting, I didn't know what I was doing. When I started live streaming, I didn't know what I was doing. So like all of this is self-taught. I didn't go to school for any of this, but it also means that I made a lot of mistakes and that I improve little by little over time. And at some point, you know, I just, I just kind of learned the skills, you know, to be successful. And that's, that's really it. Uh, how about some resources for people that are re almost ready to take the leap, but are, but need a little bit of guidance or a push or some hand holding like where can they go to to learn more i think the number one biggest thing anybody can do before you take a leap is to get a mentor you know and there's a lot of free resources and that's that's the first thing i did when i moved here first thing i did when i moved to savannah you got to find some type of mentorship um and there's a lot of free resources there's a uh, in savannah it's called the savannah business development center but there are you know business development just search for your city, you know, Char so Charlotte Biz Small Business Development Center. And here it's called the Small Business Development Tech Technology Center, something like that. But it's the same thing. And they're all like funded and backed by the SBA. Um, and every big city, even a lot of small cities will have something like that. Um, SCORE, S-C-O-R-E, is something the Council of Retired Executives, I don't know what that stands for, but they are a free, both of these are free, free, free uh, mentorship programs and you'll be meeting with local people who can help guide you in whatever business you, you pursue. So they'll, and they'll link you up with somebody who has experience doing what you're trying to do. So that was a huge part. I had a mentor at the SBDC in Savannah uh, when I first started pot on the go and he led me in a lot of right directions. He introduced me to a cool, a few cool people. He's the reason I met um, Marjorie Young in Savannah and uh, shout out to her. She is um you know, one of, became one of my great mentors um, and good friends. Um, yeah, so that's the biggest thing that that helped me the most. Like, if you want to avoid failure, then find a mentor, and then mentors will lead you either, especially local. You know, because you can buy all these online courses about you know starting a business or do all this stuff, but local is is key because they're going to be able to introduce you to attorneys and accountants and marketing professionals and people locally who are looking to start something or who can, who can help you uh, guide, you know, like it's something about you, you want to start local as much as possible. Even if you're selling t-shirts online, you know, maybe they can introduce you to a local business who is looking to outfit their entire company with t-shirts, you know, and you can, you can start a low, you know, a, t a online t-shirt company, but you can also help local businesses by, you know, selling to them. So even if you have a mostly online company, and you're planning on just doing Google ads and you're expert at that, you still want to have a local mentor because you never know locally who you can help out. So that's, that's my, if you want to avoid failure, you get a mentor. Yeah. And a free mentor is, is great as well. You know, you could spend a thousand dollars on an online course and join a thousand dollar a month mastermind uh, out of Colorado or something like that. Or, you know, like Dan Pena, I think he charges like $20,000 to go to his estate, his castle in Scotland. Go so you yelled, yelled, yelled at and cussed out and called called all kinds of names, you know. I could call you that if you want to pay me twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> I have no problem calling you whatever name he'll call you, right? But you don't need that if you want to be successful. So, um, so did you want to uh, try and address the moment of truth? Do you want to do a moment of truth, or do you think you kind of touched on that already? I, I think I kind of touched on it. Um, I, I guess one key point about failure and you know how I feel about failure is that yes, it hurts, but when you fall down, like you gain a skill, you know, when you fail, you gain skills. So as you know, you just have to wait, like everybody starts out, not everybody, but most people you start a business, you start out poor, you start out kind of dumb, you start out ignorant, you don't know what you're doing, you're just learning, right? But you will grow. And over years, I've been doing my business now for four years, and I have 
you know, this background, this, uh, even though my mic ends right here, <laughs> like people are always really impressed with the background, you know, because people are used to seeing just, you know, really, really, let me see if I can pull it up really quick, but a super crazy close up, you know, like this, closer than that of most people, you know, where it's just on their face, you got the, anyway, what I'm trying to say is you're going to build some skills, you're going to gain skills. And that's, that is more, having a skill set is more important than any amount of money somebody can give you because you'll never be without uh, a way to earn money. You know, it's, it's about, you know, the old adage of teaching, teaching a man to fish is better than giving him a fish. You know, if you fail and learn some skills, then you're going to be teaching yourself to fish. So you'll always be able to catch fish. You know, even if this business fails, I, now I know how to um, live stream. I could go to another company and say, Hey, I could be a technical director or I could be your producer. Or if this, if this fails, then I could go to a TV show and say, I have skills and, you know, lighting and virtual sets and all this stuff. So, you know, that's, that's the, when you fail, it hurts. It's going to hurt. You're going to fall. It's going to hurt. But the moment of truth is that you're going to build a skill that is going to be more important for you and your future than any amount of money, you know, is. So that's the moment of truth. Um, yeah, a moment that comes to mind is uh, my very first house I bought. I, uh, I sunk a ton of money into it. And when I sold, I took a bath big time. I lost, mm -hmm. you know, I lost a ton of money, but I had to rebuild that house from the ground up. I mean, mm -hmm. so now I know how to do, um, you know, everything from plumbing to electrical to drywall finishing work. I even moved some stairs. So mm -hmm. basically I, I call that my tuition for trade school, you know, so mm -hmm. Uh, it, that that's what I got. The, I got a lot of intangibles out of that experience, even though on paper, it was a colossal failure. Um, <laughs> but you know, that's, that's life. And uh, yeah. I know what to do next time. So, and I yeah. know, I know to how to approach a deal uh, a little differently. Yep. So what to look for all that stuff. Totally. And you and, know how to build a chicken coop. And I know how to, and, and disassemble. <laughs> <laughs> Because we 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 decided to build a Raza chicken coop like a month before he he knew he was moving to Charlotte, so like we put it up and then it was almost done, and we're like, all right, let's pull it back down. So, <laughs> um, so that's a failure too. But you know, we had a good we had a good time doing it. So. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we got yeah we had some drinks too, so it was a lot of fun. So let's let's plug uh let's plug uh let's tell the audience a little bit about Pot on the Go and uh, tell them how they can learn more about it. Yeah, so Pod on the Go is a platform for podcast studios and podcasters. If you're a podcaster and you want to level up your show, then you can go to podonthego.com and find a studio near you. And then that way you'll have a, uh, you have a mentor, you know, to help you improve your show, the sound, the look, the, the feel, everything. So, uh, yeah, go check out podonthego.com and find a studio near you. I also have the Pod on the Go show that I'm doing daily streaming on YouTube. So uh, go check out Pod on the Go on if you type in pod on the go, all one word, my show will pop right up. Nobody else has that. So yeah, on YouTube. So check me out. Subscribe, please. Cool. Any, uh, any closing thoughts? Uh, no, man, this is fun. Uh, the studio, the studio looks great. The pod box looks great. Um, a little messy right now, but I've been busy. Yeah. 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 That's nah, great. Um, and then, um, yeah. And I'm glad to be back and I'm looking forward to doing more creative truths together. So yeah. Me too. And you can look for me on uh, the pot on the go show. I'm sure all the time. That's right. That's so, right. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening to uh, this week's episode of the creative truth in upcoming episodes. I'm going to be talking to more creative professionals uh, and, and discovering what it takes to be successful in their career. Um, whether they're artists or um, uh, VFX, I've spoken with VFX artists, photographers, videographers. Um, you, you need to be able to be creative, but you also need to know how to make money. So we're, we're just trying to learn from other people's mistakes, other people who've taken the leap of faith and maybe it's worked for them. Maybe it hasn't, but uh, that's what we're trying to find out. So uh, if you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, don't forget to give us a good review. And if you're watching on YouTube, please uh, like, share, and subscribe. And we will See you in the next episode. Thanks.